Uh, good afternoon, all of you. I am P L N Raju again. Uh, today I am going to speak on uh, map projections. When uh, when we generate uh, uh, themes uh, in a GIS, so uh, those uh, maps uh, will be brought into uh, certain coordinate system, certain uh, projections. And then uh, those uh, coordinate system what we assign and then the projections what we project, it also depends upon the uh, that project definition. So, when we start any work, you have to, you have to define your project. So, in what projections uh, you are going to uh, make the maps and what are the coordinate systems we are going to use. So, normally uh, when we, when we talk about uh, uh, any, uh, any project like at national level projects, so they also uh, initially they uh, specify these requirements, what is the framework what we are going to use and then accordingly you uh, start your uh, uh, preparing your maps uh, uh, accordingly. So that map projection uh, plays an important role. First of all you can also talk about uh, why we want uh, map projections because uh, whatever the data, satellite data you talk and whatever the maps, the paper maps we talk. So, some of the paper maps and then satellite data when it comes, so it comes without any, uh, any, any uh, proper uh, coordinate system, proper datum, it does not come with the datums and it also does not come with the projections. So, once we receive them, then we also have to project it to that, uh, what, what is the projection system that already the maps are digitized and then what is the datum used for the map. Similarly, the same thing you can also assign to your satellite data also. If you talk about a large scale maps, so those large scale maps also, uh, uh, they are prepared uh, normally without uh, any, any proper, uh, uh, any proper uh, projections. So, they are, uh, uh, they are prepared based on the measurements. So, they do not take into consideration of uh, uh, earth curvature and uh, other other things uh, datum into consideration. So, once we uh, digitize them and try, try to match with your other maps which are there with a proper coordinate system and proper datum and projections. So, they may match, they may not match. So, that is why we have to bring it to all the maps into one uh, uh, datum and then one uh, common uh, projection system. So, it is very much essential. So, even uh, last time uh, I took the lecture on uh, digitization inputting the data. So, there also we talked uh, that when you scan a map, so that scan ma map also has to be assigned proper projection system. So, uh, and then uh, if there are uh, some maps are there like a topographical maps which are there already, so those maps also already projected into some projection system. They use also uh, some uh, datum and then projection. So, we have to understand once we see that maps, so they also come with their own metadata. So, they comes that suppose if you talk about a survey of India old maps, so they are uh, they are created in uh, Everest uh, datum and then polyconic projection. And then the latest maps what uh, they do is uh, 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 this one. WGS 84 is the datum and then uh, what, what they do is UTM projection. So, we will talk all these issues uh, in, the, uh, in this uh, lecture. So, before uh, going to uh, uh, map projections, you might have studied uh, at, uh, at, at school level or at a different level, how these latitude longitudes are assigned for a particular place on the earth. Suppose you are standing at equator and then uh, you are there at uh, maybe uh, uh, 80 degrees, 80 degrees for uh, uh, longitude. So, that means uh, uh, you, there is also uh, that for that you have to take a one reference. So, the reference is something like a, a green which uh, is there in that uh, UK. So, that is the reference plane, reference plane of that uh, longitude and uh, if you that uh, you take as a plane, you cut the equa uh, that equator and then center of the earth 
uh, going center of the earth, that will be the plane. From that, that horizontal angle, if you draw and then if wherever you are standing, it comes as 80 degrees. So then it becomes a 80 degrees longitude. So that's why uh, it is also uh, total 360 degrees. If you take a green, which is the uh, reference plane, from there uh, it is 180 degrees plus and 180 degrees minus. So then it becomes uh, total 360 degrees. Similarly, for longitude also from the equator, you uh, equator to the north uh, towards north. Equator is a zero degree longitude latitude, and then you go uh, 10 degree means uh, from the plane of equator uh, that angle is 10 degrees and cutting the surface of the earth at 10 degrees. And then you go upwards, so then it will be 20, 30, and like that, and then it goes finally to uh, 90 degrees in the North Pole, similarly to the South. So that's why when you talk about uh, uh, longitude, it is from the reference plane to the east, so that's why. We, for India, it is the eastern side. If you go to the America and then Europe, they are all on the western side. So minus 180 that side and plus 180. That's why we write east, 90 degree east or 80 degree east. And when you go to the north, we say 10 degree north, 20 degree north, 30 degree north. So India comes around, uh, uh, you have 25 degrees to 30, 35 degrees. So that is the longitude range what we cover. And then uh, 70, 75 to we have a, uh, 85, 90 degrees uh, longitude range for the Indian uh, region. So it is also important that uh, you should know that uh, how that uh, earth is. The earth surface is around 510 uh, uh, odd, this is a million kilometer square. And the mass is 5.97 into 10 to the power of, uh, 24 kilos. And uh, KG, and then you have uh, you, the important thing you have to notice is uh, equatorial radius 6378 uh, that is the uh, kilometers, and then polar radius is the uh, vertical radius that is 6356. So, if you see that there is around 22 kilometers uh, that is uh, north, uh, northern side, it is lesser than the if you see on the equator plane. So, that means. It is not uh, completely sphere, so that is why we always say uh, ellipsoid. So, that ellipsoid means uh, the major axis which is there in x axis is higher than the, the minor axis in the uh, y axis. It is also called oblate uh, spheroid. So, and then, uh, then it is a flattening. Suppose if it is the same, the value should be the 0, but uh, if it is not the same, that the flattening formula is a minus b by a. So then uh, because there is a difference in uh, uh, the same major axis, semi major, major axis and semi minor axis, so you will get a flattening of that. So uh, in my lecture uh, what I uh, will be going to cover is how mm -hmm. earth uh, looks like. Uh, is, it a, is it a completely sphere or it is a ellipsoid or even ellipsoid uh, also. Uh, is it a, is a uniform surface or there are undulating surfaces on that and then how to represent the points on the uh, are referred on the map. So basically uh, uh, you we have a, a curvilinear coordinates and then uh, it is shown in the latitude, longitude in the degrees and then uh, what we wanted uh, for the projections. Basically, uh, all these maps, whatever you see, this is a two-dimensional form. That means it is a paper sheet. And then uh, the earth is represented in a 3D with a, with a difference in elevations at different places. So then how to bring uh, this three-dimensional uh, globe into the uh, plain surface map? That means bringing a 3D surface into a 2D surface. So that is what... Uh, uh, we can also define uh, what is the projection is also how to represent a 3D surface of the earth under the 2D map, uh, 2D paper, and then followed by we will have a uh, hope to have a discussions with you at the end of the lecture. So, so uh, see uh, if you see that uh, earth, and then earth if you see from the satellite it looks like this whatever is shown here. So 1957, you might be knowing that the first satellite uh, is launched, Sputnik satellites, and then onwards we have started receiving the Earth. 
regularly. So then that, uh, based on that, uh, we can also calculate uh, various parameters. So, but if you see that, uh, if you take out the water, what will happen to the earth? It looks like a, uh, uh, it looks like some egg. So there is a shape is uh, different shape, and then uh, it is not a. Uh, what is that? Even a spherical, or it is not even a uh, ellipsoid. So there is a irregular, uh, irregular surface. So that is what happens. And uh, basically, because of that, we have to take many assumptions. See, one is uh, what assumption is one. Uh, we we try to take it uh, ellipsoid as a mathematical surface, having a some major axis and minor axis, trying to fit uh, around the Earth as uh, as true as possible. And then uh, we also take into a geoid into a one more surface. So that is the equipotential surface of the Earth. And these two surfaces we take as a reference, and basis on the basis of that we calculate the horizontal positions as well as the vertical positions. So basically, representation of a point on Earth. Suppose, as I said, uh, maybe you are there at 80 degree uh, longitude, and then around 29 or 30 degree uh, latitude, and then those is a basically horizontal representation on the Earth surface, and then the third third dimension is the vertical height how do you represent a vertical height we take a uh, uh, we take a geoid as a reference plane and from the geoid how much is the height suppose if you take a wgs 84 and from that uh, it is basically a geoidal height and then uh, if you talk about a our own uh, uh, topographic map they talk about a msl height uh, height above mean sea level so that means uh, uh, what we take it as a the reference plane what we take is it is also called a datum so then uh, you can also say that when you say datum it is a horizontal datum or a vertical datum vertical datum with the reference to geoid horizontal datum with the ellipsoid so you can say uh, everest ellipsoid is a one datum and wgs 84 is a one more uh, uh, datum that is a horizontal datum horizontal ellipsoidal datum so these two datums are used uh, further where you wanted to calculate the projections. So the next map what it shows is uh, uh, three lines. One is normally where we stand basically the topography and then topographic surface that is represented in the green color. And then another is uh, mathematical surface that is the ellipsoidal surface that uh, red dotted line. And then uh, geoid surface it is the equipotential surface uh, basically. Uh, following that uh, uh, water flow line that is. So these are the three surfaces we, we use for further uh, either you further calculations or further uh, as a reference for finding out the height of different places etc. See if you see this uh, the map what is shown here again uh, you you go back to that what I have shown that it is also same uh, three lines what is shown here. So here it is uh, ellipsoidal is a straight line, it is a mathematical surface and from there uh, you calculate your horizontal and vertical positions and then the topographic surface that yellow color here and then third is uh, light uh, uh, cyan color it is. So that is the geodal uh, plane. And then uh, what we do is we require is a orthographic height. So orthographic height is height above the geoid. If you say the geoid as a reference if you take and from the geoid to the topography is a orthographic height. And then if you see that one more is ellipsoidal height, the height above uh, your uh, mathematical surface, height, height above the ellipsoid. Suppose uh, when, I when I say WJS 84, so the WJS84 is a uh, ellipsoidal surface, and then it's whatever the height you get in a GPS, it is basically uh, it is the height above the ellipsoidal what you get. So that is called a uh, ellipsoidal height. In bracket, it is also written a height of uh, GPS, and then minus uh, GPS height. So it can be a, uh, uh, this is that n is that. Uh, uh, Z height and then uh, this uh, geoid may be uh, allowed, uh, above the 
uh, above the ellipsoid uh, surface or it can be below the ellipsoid surface. Here it is above, but here it is it is a below. So basically, uh, you say minus and then it become a minus value, then it becomes a positive. So then here it will be added value, but here it minus n geoid is a it is the height above the geoid. Uh, it is uh, height uh, above ellipsoid in between uh, ellipsoid and then a geoid surface. So that's why orthometric height is you have ellipsoidal height minus geoid height, you get a orthographic height. Another important thing is uh, when uh, when the maps are made. So the maps are made and then by existing into a uh, some some as a reference plane. See if you see this, so if you talk about uh, this is the India there and then uh, there uh, there is also surface which is uh, this is a red color surface which is uh, taken this as a reference uh, ellipsoid and that ellipsoid is uh, it is all matching the India almost uh, exactly with the India but it is not matching at other places. So it is not even touching the earth somewhere shifted. So that means it is a basically uh, uh, local uh, uh, this thing uh, uh, reference plane. So that is what it is. So and then it is not uh, there are two things you when you fit a uh, locally this thing the center of that uh, reference plane is not matching exactly with the center of the, the earth. But if you take it as a reference plane like a WGS 84 or ITRF uh, uh, reference plane, so they are all taken into consideration, yeah, earth at the center and then it is uh, uh, this reference plane also at the at the center of the earth. So that way both will be matching there but here it is not matching and then when it, when it is done like that also you have to understand when you project it. Uh, project it to on, on, a, on a particular area. So there are various uh, parameters are there, properties are there, whether the size, shape, the length and area, directions, all these are the properties of the earth, all these four properties when you project it, so they, they are the whether uh, are able to uh, coming as, as actual as not, that is the point. So once you try to see all these four parameters, so it is sometimes so what we do is suppose we talk about the navigational maps. So then we talk about more direction is important thing. So some places uh, uh, area is important. That's why equal area uh, projections. And uh, some places uh, the shape is important. Some places the distance is important. So these properties we try to adjust means uh, as as actual as possible. And then all these four properties. Uh, if you want to try to adjust one property, other properties will not match. So that's why when you project it, uh, some of the properties we are able to meet, some of the properties are not able, we are not able to meet. So that is, uh, it is not possible to adjust all the all the properties when you project it. So according to the purpose, so your projections uh, will be made. And then uh, th when we calculate uh, for transformation, suppose we have our own locally fit uh, uh, ellipsoid and then you have a centrally fit ellipsoid, you should take both into consideration. So there are uh, seven uh, translation, seven parameters are there. So those parameters we have to change from fitting from one to other. So these parameters also they try to uh, keep and then try to use those parameters for transforming from one uh, uh, one locally fit to the uh, you have uh, uh, worldly fit means uh, universal uh, coordinate system and universal projection system. So that this translation parameters and rotation parameters and scalp scale parameters will be used in that case. So as I as I mentioned in my first slide also, basically as I mentioned, what I mentioned is transforming of a three-dimensional space into a two-dimensional map is called a projection. Here, what is that? Uh, basically, we are uh, systematic arrangement of intersecting lines 
on a plane that represent and have a one or two of the corresponding to the meridians and parallels onto the on the datum surface. So this is what uh, projection. Suppose whatever is the globe is there. So then we use different projection systems. Either we use as a cone as a uh, reference frame, or you use a cylinder. So then you project finally into your output map. So when you say uh, projections, so there are uh, various uh, pro properties are there. So those properties you have to preserve when you talk about uh, uh, projections. Uh, these uh, these are the properties. So one is uh, equal area. That means you are maintaining the uh, area as as true as possible. So here that is uh, we we will be maintaining the accurate area. And then there uh, basically examples are Lambert azimuthal equal area, Albert's uh, equal area project conic. So say if you talk about projections, there are n number of projections are there. I think around uh, 500 or so there are projections are there and then they are all based on uh, uh, different surfaces, different uh, cones and uh, cylinders and then plane projections. We use different projections on the basis of that basically the projections are done. So first we will discuss on the these uh, types of properties. One is the equal area, another is a conforming. Conformal is something like a preserving the accurate uh, shape of the any any area. Suppose you wanted to preserve shape of the India or shape of particular uh, uh, island. So then we use a conformal projections. So example is uh, like a example is marketer. Marketer is a person who invented a projection. So that's why on his name there is a projection is called a marketer. Similarly Lambert also is one of the person. So these, uh, these are the uh, different name of the project projections. Lambert conformal conic and then see there are three type of projection cylindrical and then cone and then third is a planar projection. These are the as per the uh, shape and eccentric properties are concerned and then equidistance. So when we project it the distance between the points are uh, uh, are maintained so that they should be as accurate as possible. Here is uh, equidistance conic and uh, equirectangular that is the projections what we use here. Another is azimuthal uh, projection, azimuthal or zenith projections. So here we use uh, basically uh, the plane surface. So maintains the accurate the directions and therefore angular relationship uh, are maintained. Suppose uh, we 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 keep the surface on the on the north pole or south pole, and then uh, and then your uh, meridians. See one in case in case of a, uh, latitude and longitudes, what we call is a longitudes are also called a meridians, and the latitudes are also called a parallels. So if you see that if if you put a uh, projection surface on the on the north pole and then try to project the directions, whatever you go. From there, they'll be exactly maintained. So the directions are not distorted on that. That's why this uh, maintained accurate direction in case of a azimuthal uh, projections. And then, uh, if you see uh, the properties, one is uh, uh, projection projection preserving some uh, uh, properties are like uh, preserving the area is one property, preserving the shape is another property, direction is another thing, and then distance. So some projections, uh, uh, projection preserved none of the above, but attempt to minimize distortion. See, suppose we talk about the polyconic projections, which are used for making the survey of Indian Arts. So they adjusted uh, such that uh, uh, they try to preserve uh, all of the properties, but uh, there are sl slight distortions, but uh, no property is basically properly maintained. So that means some projection preserve. Uh, two properties, either directions and distances, and then some uh, projections preserve none of the above, but attempt to minimize distortion. That is polyconic projection example. What I mentioned, the degrees and kind of distortion vary with the projections used. And then some of the projections are suitable for uh, large scale maps, and some of the projections are suitable for small scale maps, etc. And then uh, some of the projections uh, they try to project uh, for east-west uh, bound countries. Suppose you say USA, so it is most of a east-west uh, bound country. And then uh, if you talk about a, uh, what is that? 
uh, New Zealand is one country that is going north and south and then uh, Chile, Chile in uh, South America, it is also a very long country. So, those type of north-south bounds, so then you should use, uh, according to the shape, you should use the type of projection so that uh, you should able to uh, reduce the uh, distortions at the same time maintain uh, as accurate as possible. And then if we talk about projections, they are also classified into two. One is based on the uh, eccentric uh, properties, that means uh, uh, external uh, uh, surface what we keep to project it. Suppose when you talk about a uh, natural, uh, nature type of projection, one is a plane projection, there is a globe is there and the globe will give you a surface uh, like this. And another is uh, you put a cone around uh, the, the globe. And then the third is a cylinder, you put a cylinder along this uh, the surface. So, that is uh, according to the nature of the uh, either a surface or a cone or a cylinder what you use. Another is uh, uh, coincidence, uh, suppose you your cylinder is touching along, around the equator or along the north-south poles or uh, in a oblique uh, conditions, suppose you can face, uh, place, it, uh, place it tangentially somewhere on the earth where you wanted to project and another is secant projection, secant projection is one is uh, tangential projection where you are touching the surface, in case of a secant projection you are basically cutting uh, either the uh, equator, cutting the or the, the meridian surface or uh, longitude or latitude, so then it cuts at uh, two places. So, that is also having some advantages. So, that is why what you say coincidence is with the tangential surface whether it is touching exactly or a secant cutting uh, at uh, two places. So, that means uh, there will be two uh, two parallels will be there in that. Or normally, wherever it is touching one parallel. So, when touching where it is called one parallel. And then another is polysurfacial. As I mentioned, for each sheet in uh, Survey of India like 250,000, for each uh, sheet, uh, they adjust the projection surface. So, that is why they, uh, they call it a poly. Poly means uh, a small, uh, basically uh, small surfaces or small cones. You put uh, like this, you put like this. So, adjust for each sheet that is called a uh, polyconic, what you mentioned as a polysurfacial. Another is a position, either you put it along the equator, so that is a normal projection. Another is uh, you put it uh, along uh, this one, uh, cylinder you uh, tilt it and then that you put it in horizontal, so that is called a uh, transverse projection. Another is you put uh, your cylinder in a particular angle, so that is called oblique projections. So, according to the classification of projections, so these are the types of projection. Another is, uh, uh, another important thing is intrinsic properties. So, what we talk now is, suppose if I keep a uh, on the surface or cutting the surface or I put it a uh, normal cylinder vertical and horizontal and some direction. So, that is basically uh, eccentric properties. Here what we are talking is uh, intrinsic properties. So, uh, like a property is what I mentioned earlier. What are the properties that we should preserve? So, like uh, Equidistance is one of the properties we should uh, that means the distance between points should be that uh, equal and then uh, conformal that is the shape is uh, is maintained conformal is orthomorphic and equivalent or equal area that means if there is a area on the ground whatever you measured and whatever is projected it should be the same. So, you should not get the different thing. Another uh, generation suppose you wanted to generate a projection based on the a source from where you wanted to project it. Suppose uh, I, I talk about a projecting uh, something from the center of the earth. So, you put a light inside the globe at the center and then see that how these latitude longitudes when it is projected to the plane surface or the cylinder how they are uh, formed on that surface. <laughs> that means uh, that is called a mnemonic projection. So, if you have source from where you are projecting, so that is called a mnemonic surface, uh, mnemonic projection. Another is uh, semi, semi geometric and mathematical. So, geometric is something when you talk about a, 
uh, urban areas or uh, uh, properties in villages what they do is they just measure on the ground and then try to make a map so there uh, they don't take into consideration of uh, this angular uh, coordinates uh, into consideration what they take is a linear uh, geometrical coordinates if they measure the distance between that and then uh, try to uh, make a map and then mathematically is also uh, something like a uh, geometrical so using the mathematical formula you try to calculate the distances and angles and in between that see if you see this i think uh, i don't know whether you are able to see so if you if you i'm just uh, trying to zoom it i don't know the same thing what you say that uh, uh, different type of projections one is uh, if you do it uh, from the center of the earth whatever the point here is it is going further away so the more near you are it is projected a wider something like a wide angle camera so it covers the large area and then it is also pointing the point uh, somewhere uh, away from the it is and another is what you call is a uh, orthographic what is that stereographic so another one is if you project it from uh, other side of the earth so that is called more a stereographic projection and then if you project it uh, from uh, infinite distance means you are parallelly projecting so that is called a ortho orthographic projection these are the three types of uh, projections what normally uh, are used and then uh, when you comes to uh, uh, projections there are three type of projections azimuthal cylindrical and then conical projection so the first projection what is what is shown here is azimuthal azimuthal is you can put a surface on the uh, on the north pole or a put a surface on the equator or put a uh, uh, plane uh, somewhere in between so it is called a oblique uh, type of projection i mentioned earlier suppose you are projecting from the center of the earth how this latitude longitude uh, uh, represent latitudes are the concentric circles like uh, 10 degree 20 degree and all those things and then uh, your uh, medians so they are also going uh, uh, away uh, uh, from the center so that is something like from 0 to they they go different angles and then uh, all these things uh, how this map looks for each type of uh, projection when you do is a, a mnemonic projections and then if you do it a, from the center and keeping as a surface but if you keep a plane on the equator how it projection looks or if you keep a oblique how the uh, the projection looks so here uh, is the center line of uh, equator is a, like a central straight and the meridian is straight but other the these things uh, latitudes they are going as a away uh, above the equator uh, it goes in a curved manner and then below the equator also it goes in a different curved manner so this is a stereographic projection when you project it from the put it a plane on the pole and then project it from the other other end of the uh, earth that is Uh, north pole you are projecting from the south pole and how this projected surface is uh, map looks like here and then you have a cylindrical projection here uh, so here is again uh, the same thing you put it as a normal another is <coughs> uh, horizontal and then third is you is a uh, oblique so these are the uh, three things i also mentioned that when you project it it is not only touching the surface tangentially sometimes we cut the surf, cut the surface suppose if you talk about here the uh, normal uh, cylinder it is cutting at two uh, uh, at uh, two latitudes one is maybe uh, 20 degrees above equator and 20 degrees below equator so it is cutting that so that means when you cut and open that you will be having two parallels where this your cylinder is touched so that means along these two parallels what you get is uh, the directions and the distances on that 
will be uh, equal on the ground whatever is e there and then there will be also there on the on the map also they try to maintain. So when you go away from that what is that is your distances are increasing from that place. Similarly when you uh, com coming in uh, cutting uh, the surface that means the distance are diminishing that means uh, it, it will be showing less than the actual when you come to the near to the equator and then when you go from the touching surface so from there it is <coughs> going expanding further. So the third uh, projection is here uh, conic projections. So here also we have a the cone you placed at a certain place tangentially and the cone you place it as a the secant way. So then you you are then you unfold basically <coughs> at uh, at uh, you basically take a center of that meridian and then you try to cut and cut open that surface and then you you try to see that in case of a tangential you have a one parallel which was touching tangentially. So along with that surface along with that line you will have a less distortion. So you go away from that so you will get a more distortions on that. So in case of uh, tangents it is only uh, one standard parallel if you go to the secant you will be having a two standard parallels. So whatever is touching the surface that is, that is called a standard uh, parallel or standard uh, lateral. <coughs> then uh, what you see is a cylindrical map projection. So cylindrical map projections are made of projecting from the globe into the surface of the enclosing the cylinder and then unwrapping the cylinder to make it a flat surface. So all this navigational map, all the world maps what, what you see they are mostly made uh, with the cylindrical uh, cylindrical projection projected map. <coughs> so it is invented by Mercator so that is why we call it a Mercator uh, cylindrical projection and then if you put it a cylinder normally in the north south and then touching the equator that is a marketer another is normal uh, uh, this one marketer otherwise if you put it a horizontal that is called a uh, transverse marketer and Cassini uh, cylinder is basically more of a uh, geometric type of projections which are used for making the large scale maps. So they are they are mostly based on the geometric measurements. So Mercator projection cylindric is conformal the shape is uh, maintained so that is why they are uh, uh, conformal projections. Meridians are equally spaced the meridians means so the longitudes are basically they are you see if you, if you have a cylinder uh, like this and then putting a uh, if you have globe here and then cylinder we put that touching the equator and try to open it all these uh, longitudes are meridians. So they are equally spaced, uh, spaced. But if you uh, after projection, if you see these parallels <coughs> from equator, you go further. So they are basically uh, distance apart. If it is a 10 degree uh, latitude, 20 degree. So 0 to 10, the distance is uh, smaller. So 10 to 20 is uh, larger. So like that, if you go further to that 80 degrees and 90 degrees, so then uh, they are going further away. So these are all. Uh, uh, longitudes and the latitudes they are basically uh, placed uh, longitudes are equally placed and then latitudes are uh, they are varying in uh, <coughs> distances between them. So scale is uh, true here along the equator and great distortion of area in polar region. So, so that is why if you go away from that uh, this thing polar region so they looks bigger but they are not bigger. So these are all basically they maintain the angles, they maintain the uh, distances, uh, angle shape is maintained and then they also maintain the angles. So they are used for the navigation purposes. <coughs> so this is that projection what is called a Mercator projection. So normal uh, uh, Mercator uh, cylindrical, normal cylindrical projection it is. If you see that this is the equator. So it is plus 180 degrees, minus 180 degrees, 180 degree east, 180 degree west. And then if you see these uh, verticals, so they are always equally placed, there is no difference. But if you see that this is the equator and then if you go away, so the distance between this and distance between this 
is different. Though they are uh, uh, the degrees in between the difference of degrees is uh, distancing about uh, distancing further. So that's why whatever you see <coughs> here, uh, Mercato projection and the Greenland problem. You see that this is a Greenland looking very big. So it is it is looking uh, almost uh, uh, equivalent to Africa or slightly less, but the almost uh, bigger than your South America. And then if you see that, if you go and see, check in the internet and then check in somewhere, see what is the area of South America, you try to find out what is the area of uh, Greenland. So area of the Greenland is 2.2 uh, uh, million square kilometers, whereas this uh, it is almost uh, <coughs> six times uh, bigger. So that means it is almost uh, uh, 12 million square kilometers. So, but uh, <coughs> in the projected uh, map output, both uh, our uh, Greenland looks bigger. Even you take the India, so that India also is uh, bigger than uh, Greenland. But if you see that here India, it is so shown as very small. So, India is uh, 1.5 times bigger than uh, even Greenland. So, it is about 3.2 million uh, square kilometers India, but it is only 2.2 uh, million square kilometers. So, the projection plays a very important role. Uh, for preserving the one is the shape, another is the the size. So, uh, if and then uh, uh, example is if you use a cylindrical projection, uh, going in the north pole is uh, uh, it is increasing the distances than the actuals. So, but uh, that is not actual in this case. So, it is used for certain purpose, navigation purpose. So, it is uh, that way. Uh, 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 the purpose is served for the navigation, but uh, you should not take as a uh, area into consideration in this case. So I'll just stop here for uh, two minutes, uh, two three minutes, and then uh, uh, we will come back again. Uh, there are questions are there, like uh, what is a spheroid and then what is a geoid and a ellipsoid? What are the differences between that? So before going further, I just wanted to elaborate. Uh, one is uh, uh, the spheroid is something like a, uh, uh, the major axis and minor axis will be equal. So it is a complete sphere. Say if you take a football or you take any ball, which is the diameter is is same in uh, all the directions from the center. So that is called a uh, the spheroid or sphere. So Earth is also is one one sphere. So but. Uh, we say it is ellipsoid because the major axis is higher than the minor axis. Suppose if you take a plain paper, put a uh, major axis slightly higher and then minor axis smaller and then you try to rotate that frame, uh, frame in the, uh, with the reference to that vertical axis, that minor axis. So it will form as a ellipse. You rotate, it will look as a, as a sphere, but it is not a sphere because uh, uh, it is an oblated sphere, so both the sides it is pressed. If you take a ball and press, so that is that will become a ellipsoid. And then uh, the Earth, as I shown earlier, so it is not a uh, very uh, perfect figure. So there are so many undulations. So if you see, so somewhere it is uh, so minus uh, what is say minus 400 meters to uh, plus uh, 8,800 kilometers. So that means. It is a 12 kilometers up and downs on the earth. So, but that up and downs, uh, when we try to calculate uh, this horizontal uh, reference and uh, you wanted to calculate the distances on the ground, x, y coordinates, and then you wanted to see that height on that, we always take, take it from the, uh, from a reference plane. So, the reference plane is a must. So, because all these things are done in a mathematically. So that that's why this reference plane is taken. That reference plane, if you use it for horizontal uh, representation, horizontal uh, uh, coordinates, so that is called a uh, horizontal datum. So that horizontal datum, it can be a, a Everest spheroid, as I mentioned. Uh, you adjust this to Indian datum, that is called Everest spheroid, or you adjust it to uh, world uh, this thing, WGS84. Or that is also called WRS80, IT, ITR frame. So you adjust it to some frame. So then you project uh, whatever is coming on the earth to 
to uh, the total uh, or to the globe. So that that will that will that will be taken as a one reference. So that is also called a horizontal data. One is WJS uh, 84, another is uh, Everest spheroid, and then if you talk about uh, America, they used to use a Clark uh, 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 ellipsoid, Clark, Clark reference system. So they also call I think NAAD. Uh, 27 or Clark as a reference, uh, Clark as a reference, NAED is a projection used for America. So you use a uh, certain uh, reference frames. So for vertical what you use is <laughs> either, uh, either uh, uh, MSL as a reference plane or orthographic uh, height you take it as a uh, geoid as a, a reference plane you take or you take a ellipsoid as a reference plane so that is called vertical data you take you take a geoid and then taking that geoid as a reference that will become a vertical data so like uh, you calculate msl etc and then you horizontal coordinate what you calculate is uh, based on the horizontal data so horizontal datum is wj84 uh, your uh, uh, your own Indian Everest uh, spheroid or a Clark uh, uh, spheroid. So there are so many uh, reference frames are there. So th that way th those are all done. Uh, we will come back again uh, at the end of the lectures uh, for the clarifications. <coughs> so as I mentioned earlier, so it is a, a one is a normal uh, cylinder that Mercator projection. Another is a transverse Mercator projection. You put it a horizontal the cylinder that is called a transverse. It is also maintaining the shape, so it is called a conformal projection. Central meridian and equator are, uh, and the equator are the straight lines. So the meridian, whatever the cylinder is touching uh, the earth, so that meridian will be straight. And then uh, the, all this uh, equator are straight line. All other meridians and parallels are complex curves. So this is basically used for a large scale uh, mapping, 1 is to 50,000. Uh, two, uh, this is also called quadrangle maps. This quadrangle maps, uh, uh, you, uh, the notation is used for American, uh, uh, they make the maps, they call it as a quadrangle maps. So that is 1 is to 24,000, 1 is to 250,000 maps. But areas with a larger north-south extent. So areas, large north-south north extent than the east-west uh, extent. So, so you keep it a uh, this thing transverse for the areas of uh, uh, north-south direction like as I mentioned Chile, New Zealand or you talk about Kerala. So these are all uh, basically they are their north-south direction and then east-west suppose you talk about Madhya Pradesh, you talk about ESA. So they, they are basically east-west uh, uh, extent for them uh, you use a, a different normal maybe marketer projection. The transverse is which is there in the north-south direction. Another is Cassini uh, uh, Sol, uh, Solner projection. So cylindrical, tangent and transverse, all three types. It is basically equidistance uh, projection. It is cylindrical. And basically uh, if you see that one, it is used for the smaller areas. Suppose I talk about a 70 kilometer belt from the central meridian, wherever you have a meridian touching, so that central meridian we take it and then 70 kilometer only, very small area you take, so that the distortion factor at 70 kilometer is very nominal. So it is 1.00006, so that is the distortion if you <coughs> use this projection. Basically it is used for also cadastral survey in India. So if you talk about cadastral survey, Basically, they are uh, not taken into consideration for the projection parameters. So they did uh, uh, basically geometrically project it. So that way it is done. The, the third projection is we talked about uh, <coughs> azimuthal planar projection. We talked about the cylindrical. So the third projection what we are talking is for a conic projection, the projection surface is a cone shaped. So that we put a cone instead of a our uh, cylinder or a uh, plane. So cone is uh, basically it is good because uh, it will have a less uh, uh, distortion because you are adjusting uh, the surface 
uh, into the very near to the surface. If you talk about cylinder, you just uh, equator it and then uh, it is going vertically. So, there is a lot of gap coming between the, the surface and then projected surface. So, that the distance is more and you project it. So, the distortions also will be here. So, that way when you make it a cone, basically the distortions basically comes down here. And then once you project it, you unwrap it and then uh, flattening it and then you uh, you bring out these uh, lines of uh, what is there on the earth uh, latitude, longitude lines. And Lambert uh, conformal conic projection is, <coughs> it is a conical projection, it is a conformal, the shape is maintained. Parallels are basically, parallel means uh, latitudinal lines, they are basically concentric circuit. Suppose if you put a cone like this and then you unwrap it, the paper looks like a uh, triangular sheet. So, it is near at the uh, polar side and then at side, equator side it is uh, basically near at uh, polar and then equator is, uh, side is it is basically going outward. So, like that it is. <coughs> Scale is true along the two, uh, two standard parallels. In the conform, uh, Lambert conformal, you are touching seat and uh, this thing, cutting at two parallels. So, that is why you have as two standard parallels. Uh, it projects uh, a great circle as a straight line, much better than the market. A uh, great circle means uh, your, uh, uh, wherever it is, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, your, your equator, great circle is the equator. And then used for maps of uh, countries and regions with predominantly east-west expanse. Suppose if you talk about uh, uh, America and then you take a Madhya Pradesh in case of India. So, they are basically uh, east-west uh, spread. For that type of things, you use these uh, conical uh, maps used for the plane coordinate system in USA. So, that means if you wanted to use a simple geometrical coordinate system, so they can use uh, for that type of uh, <coughs> maps. So, this is the LCC uh, projection, uh, Lambert conformal conic projections. So, if you see that uh, uh, this is this is the equator here and then the lines uh, on the upper side basically uh, they are nearer and then in the below they are this thing and then uh, the parallels are basically concentric circles and then the verticals are uh, spreading from north-south and then the northern side uh, they are nearer and then they go further, uh, they increases. And the third important thing is uh, we talk about a cone earlier also I said polysurfacial or polyconic projection where uh, you have projected <coughs> for each sheet. Suppose if you see there are uh, three lines, this is a blue line and then green line and red line. So, you put your surface touching at the blue line and then you go up and then you put your cone touching again uh, the green line, you go further up and then that means the cone uh, shape is also changing. So, suppose uh, if it is a, uh, you have to keep below uh, means uh, longer uh, latitude below near the equator, then you have bigger cone, uh, the smaller cone. And then you go further uh, um, narrow cone, but you go further north, your cone uh, widens. <coughs> that, means, that means cone is changing. And then these parallels are also, they are not concentric circles. So, there is one circle and then another circle. So, there is a gap between these uh, circles. So, that is why uh, when you make a mass with a polyconic uh, this thing, so, they are locally fit, uh, re removing all the type of properties uh, as minimum as possible, the errors will be as minimum as possible, but at the same time when you try to match those maps, so they at the edge they will not be fit properly. So, they are neither conformal nor uh, this thing, they, they do not preserve any, any uh, properties as such. All the four properties they try to adjust to minimize as much as possible but uh, they do not uh, basically remove or uh, any one of the property is not maintained also. So, this is a polyconic, uh, this is a problem with this and then uh, this is done for India using Everest uh, spheroid as the datum 
and then polyconic as a projection. So, so far the maps what you see from the survey of India, so they are projected from the uh, poly, uh, polyconic uh, projections datum as Everest spheroid. But suppose you wanted to use somebody uh, some world level, uh, they are using a, some different standard as a <coughs> center of the earth as a uh, consideration for that uh, datum. Suppose WGSIT4, you try to match both the things, they will not match together. So, that is another problem with this polyphonic this thing. And then uh, because uh, there was a, uh, the efforts are there to change these uh, maps. So, that is why Survey of India has come out with a <coughs> uh, some new series of maps. So, those new series of the maps, these polyconic projections is also uh, basically the maps were pro, uh, projected. So, they are also used for uh, uh, civilian purpose, they are also used for military purpose. So, with the, uh, with the, with the time uh, now change and then people are also wanted the maps for various purposes. <coughs> Survey of India wanted to separate uh, these maps which are required the, the common public to the maps available for the military. So, that is why they again uh, brought out uh, with the new uh, projections things for uh, separately for uh, uh, normal users as well as the uh, uh, military use. So, in this uh, projection all parallels are projected without any dis distance. So, that means each parallel surface they will be putting that uh, cone touching, but another parallel you go 1 degree, 1 degree, each 1 degree you, are, you have a uh, projection is different. Scale is exact along each parallel and central meridian and then uh, parallels are arcs of circles. So, we have as I have shown earlier, so they are arcs of circles going like this and not touching each other, but uh, not concentric that means they are not uh, touching each other. It is neither conformal nor equilibrium. Yeah. So, that means uh, any, any of the projections uh, properties it is not maintained. So, uh, again further uh, about polyconic projection, central meri meridian equal are the straight lines and other meridians are the curves. Central meridians uh, cut and parallels at 90 degree when, when they touch, so they cut at the 90 degree, free of distortion only along the central meridian. It has a rolling fit, so the rolling fit means, <coughs> that means uh, when you try to adjust so that uh, uh, adjacent maps, so they will not match. So, that, that is called a rolling fit. It has a rolling fit and adjacent states in east-west direction. It is basically used for a topographical maps of 1 is to 250,000 and the largest case even 50,000 maps. So, then uh, comes the azimuthal projection. So, it is a plane as I mentioned already I have shown the diagrams. So, it is uh, plane projections. Normal aspect of this projection is north-south, uh, north or south pole. So, they are taking either north pole or south pole, but uh, I will come back to this again. See, when you talk about uh, uh, projections for the whole globe in WGS84 and UTM, so <coughs> there we are talking about a 80 degree north and 84 degree uh, uh, south and remaining above area and below area are not made with that uh, UTM projections. So, there you use uh, basically azimuthal projections. Another uh, important thing is when you talk about a uh, UTM, Universal Transfers Marketer. So, there uh, basically we are uh, uh, dividing the whole area into smaller parts, taking a 6 degree of uh, longitudinal uh, range. Suppose if I have a, a 80 degree here, one line and 80, 86, so that is the one grid in uh, x direction and then again the north direction it is something like 8 degrees. So, 6 by 8 degree, one, one grid will take and then that uh, is basically done a uh, mark, uh, market, uh, what is that, transverse marketer means you put the cylinder like that and project it. Basically, if you take uh, uh, go to next slide and come back. So, if you see this slide, <coughs> so uh, it is something like uh, this is a central meridian and then you have a central parallel here. 
suppose you talk about at the equator and then uh, if you talk about uh, y y direction from the equator and x direction whatever you go in that uh, in the first quadrant all these points whatever you measure they will come in a positive but suppose from the equator you come down so uh, from the central place not only equator from the central place of that uh, suppose if you take a 6 degree like this and 8 degree but the for the center of that is a 4 degree above 4 degree uh, further above so that means at 4 degree you have a central meridian and then central parallel but what will happen suppose you come to that 4 degree and southwest side so that is a fourth quadrant that means your values what you get is basically negative values suppose i take a one uh, <coughs> one square box from uh, taking a uh, taking what i say uh, maybe 1 kilometer left 1 kilometer right 1 kilometer up and 1 kilometer back so the total you have a 2 kilometer by 2 kilometers so that means uh, uh, 2 by 2 is 4 square kilometers suppose if you take like a, in a geometric uh, coordinate system uh, planar uh, this thing suppose if you take a plus minus when you when you try to draw a, a boundary so in a gis it will show as a zero so that means there is a minus value there are positive values so to avoid that that means you have to calculate the actual uh, area then what we do is we shift the uh, uh, this origin from the center to the the leftmost part of that so that's why it is called a false easting and false northing so then you shift that such that with a with a higher value then you go further so there will not be any negative values so that means all positive values are taken coming in this so that's why if you go to that uh, further slide so if you see that this earth between 84 degree north and 80 degree south these are all basically divided into 60 degrees each uh, into 60 parts 60 zones and then 6 degrees wide so that means there will be 1 2 3 like that so that means 60 into 6 there will be 60 zones so latitude origin basically you take as a equator so there basically we assume that a 0 0 but if you talk about uh, the southernmost point so what we do is we say uh, <coughs> 10 uh, million meters for southern hemisphere whatever is the last uh, point like a false easting and false nothing assuming the false easting will be 500,000 meters scale factor at the central meridian is 0.9996 the distortion what you are talking when you are projecting it is 0.9996 so that means what I what I mean to say is when, when you talk about UTM you are basically uh, uh, taking some uh, some values so that uh, when we calculate uh, all our areas and distances so it will it will be exactly as per those values so if you take a minus plus all those things those things are avoided so that way we basically take uh, assume the false easting and northing for the uh, this was universal transfer marketer projection so if you talk about uh, india suppose you take this this is a grid so it is coming somewhere it is a 72 to 84 so that is a 6 degree what uh, we talk about that so basically how do you calculate this utm zones so because uh, we are talking about a uh, india is a, uh, from uh, greenwich to india is something 80 degrees but uh, these uh, grids are calculated from minus 180 so minus 180 means you talk from minus 180 and how many how many zones are there from there to here so that here zones because when you go to the GA uh, GA software it will also ask you that uh, what is the UTM zone that uh, particularly where your area belongs so I say that the UTM zone is maybe 43 or 45 so that 43 or 45 how it is calculated first uh, this 180 degrees divided by each uh, thing is what is 6 degrees suppose already minus 180 if you take by 6 it becomes a 30 so the minus 180 to 0 up to Greenwich 
it is 30 zones. From there to here, suppose I say 72 to 80, so you say uh, 30 plus 72 by again 6, so 6 by is, each zone is 6, uh, 6 degrees. So then what you get is, uh, you will get a 12, so that means 72 by 6 is uh, 12, so that means 30 plus 12 is you have 42. So it is, it is 72 onwards, so that means the next zone will be 43. So why you have to give is, because you are projecting to universal transfer marketer and then the zone you have to specify. So accordingly that once you zone specify, so it will basically calculate all its uh, coordinates, uh, the transformations, the projections requirements, it will also change to that. So that is why when you project, you have to also specify UTM, you also specify the zone, <coughs> then uh, it will calculate the projected parameters. Though finally, when you talk about a uh, map projection, the choice of map projection is uh, made to give the most accurate possible representation. That means as, uh, as or less distorted as much possible, given that some distortions are inevitable, the choice depends upon the, the location you choose, the shape the size of the reason to be mapped, the theme or the purpose of the map. It also depends upon all these purposes. <coughs> then you can just <coughs> give an idea, so what projection you should use for these different type of uh, maps. So, you can say that, uh, see it is a north-south expense, USA if you take a east-west, so then probably you should use a uh, what is a cylindrical projection, but if you talk about a, a New Zealand, uh, this is I think uh, UK, and this is a, uh, I think Chile, uh, New Zealand I think, New Zealand. So for this type of uh, maps, you should use a transverse projection. And then the, for this type of maps, so it is proposed a uh, cylindrical is also one, otherwise conical projection is one more that you can use. I mentioned that Survey of India came up with a map policy, new mapping policy. So that uh, they came out with two type of map uh, maps to be brought out. One is a open series maps, another is a defense series maps. Uh, in this uh, open series maps, so they are basically uh, uh, meant for that common public use, whereas a, uh, for a defense series maps, so they are used for a uh, used for a uh, defense applications. Switch actually uh, it is switch over from Everest uh, coordinate system to uh, geocentric. So that is earlier it is not geocentric, geocentric coordinate system that is international uh, terrestrial uh, reference frame or ITRS or uh, GRF, global uh, reference uh, system, 80 is to particular 80 is that year. Survey of India took a conscious decision to go for the geocentric reference frame, that is a ITRF or ITR, GRF 80. So these are the two type of changes, so in the open series maps when you say polyconic to UTM, Everest to WGS 84. So Everest is a, a spheroid, here WGS is a spheroid, polyconic projection to UTM projection. In the defense series maps, the polyconic to LCC, that is a change, and then Everest to WGS 84. <coughs> so the conclusion is, uh, we need to project a geospatial data for any analysis, basically when you wanted to calculate the area, the distances, etc. So even uh, I can also ask the question to you, so when, uh, when uh, you basically map a geolo, uh, GIS maps, so you keep the uh, latitude, longitude and finally when you get an output, it is also shown in degree, degree, minute something and then people will confuse, degree, minute means you will not be able to understand how much is the degree square or how much is the uh, uh, minute square. So basically those are all converted into metric system. So the metric system, it is always easy to square meters or square uh, kilometers, so like that. So that's why when you see that uh, GIS tables also, so if you see, if you if it is an UTM projection, you can also clearly see what is the area in square kilometers, etc., or a distance in uh, meters or kilometers. Makes it makes it possible to use a uh, 
data from different sources. So basically, as I mentioned in the, my initial lecture, suppose you wanted to <coughs> use different maps, you have to bring a standard, uh, this thing, we fit a standard framework, what is the datum, what is the projection that to be used. Several projections to choose from, so there are maybe 500 plus projections, but you can choose any one of them that is required for you. Projections inevitably distorts, that means uh, at least one property. So one property you can maintain well, but it distorts others. Choose a suitable uh, map projection uh, and then control the scale uh, factor, scale error. So that means either it is uh, exactly one means there is no distortion, 1.00 something that is there is a distortion. You go away from the surface of the projection to uh, further away, then it distorts. So that's why you have to maintain such that uh, you have a less errors. So these are the uh, briefing on that, what is done. I'll just uh, brief again. Basically what uh, we, have, uh, we have talked about is uh, anything you make a maps, you need a projection. And then, and then how, to, how to give a uh, representation, horizontal coordinates and then vertical coordinates. And then horizontal, you do it in a uh, degree uh, minutes. And then uh, third is vertical is uh, you say in meters and kilometers uh, like that. And then the third is uh, when you have a globe, it is in a in a spherical shape. And then I cannot carry uh, uh, the sphere exactly with the with, me, with myself. Probably in a coming age, uh, people carry only the computers. So probably you will have a still that uh, sphere with the computer then you carry that. But uh, nowadays are uh, basically for any any application or any uh, planning, so we use a flat maps. So flat maps means the papers. So for that uh, you have to be invariably change your uh, global coordinates into a plane surfacial coordinate. That means basically converting 3D to 2D. And then we also discussed about types of uh, and then properties, there are four types of properties, one is the equal area and then the shape and then uh, shape or size and then another is uh, uh, equidistance and then direction. These are the properties of uh, projections you have to take care and then there are different type of projections, planar projections or the cylindrical or the co conical projections and then there are uh, intrinsic and then eccentric uh, nature of the projections. And then uh, when you talk about uh, any map or any combination of the maps to be used, so they are basically have to be brought into same datum and the same projection. So then only you can do the comparison, overlaying and subtracting or further analysis and modeling. So these are the important th things in uh, projections. So now I stop my lecture here. So probably you can... Uh, uh, we can discuss and interact for uh, clarifying the doubts.